it is time for my monthly budget overview. It is time to get March with his funky self with closed out, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to put this to the side and I've already taken out all of the sheets that is I needed to review before going over my monthly budget. And if you hear the background noise, I do apologize. I'm not sure what he's blowing. Ain't no leaves. There's no leaves. There's literally no leaves. But he has to do it. He has to do it at a certain time. And he do it all the time. So you can hear that. And I'm making the assumption you can hear what I hear. So let's go back to the video. <laughs> so I've taken all of the sheets that um, for March out. Because what happens is everything goes in the back of the, um, the calendar. Or back in the back section, should I say, after I'm done with it. So here is the March monthly budget overview. This talks about the financial goals, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. What I brought, what I was planning to bring in, how I was planning to, what I was planning to pay out, should I say. This is the income breakdowns. This is basically just telling um, us where our money actually went when it came in. I do write, sometimes I write little notes there. Um, that pertains to the unbudgeted, so I can keep track of that. This is the envelope system spending record. This tells me exactly what I was doing with the money that came in for each category, as well as it gives me a overview of areas where I need to work on. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. I did close out my weekly check-in. Um, as always, I share my mid-month check-in where I inform um, you all that I sent the $30.51 to the Zero Out Challenge. And I closed out the month with sending $26.62 to the Zero Out Challenge. This is my spending record for my envelope system that I closed out. And again, it's the same thing as the envelope system. It just lets me know what I was doing with the money that was in this account and if there was any money that came in. The account that has took a hit was my car maintenance account and I did explain in probably every video since it happened that I had car trouble. Well, I didn't explain what the trouble was. So when it came down to it, it was a the water pump in the thermostat. Now I do have a warranty and the warranty covered the thermostat in the diagnosis because I have to still get a professional diagnosis. I just can't take the word of AutoZone. <laughs> So I have to get a professional diagnosis. So they pay for that. They pay for the water pump. And then the thermostat wasn't covered. And I had to pay for that. And I went ahead and did it. It was recommended. And if you don't know me, when I go to the auto mechanics and they talk about all these recommended, I said, so how long have I got to go with this problem? How long can I drive before this problem become bad? Well, to get out of that habit, and because I had it, I went ahead and, you know, covered the cost for the thermostat repairs. There was some activity in Papa's um, sinking fund because it's the end of the year for his senior year. So we're closing out with that. And it's the beginning year of his freshman year of college. So we're gearing up for that as well. Um, I was able to receive the money owed from um, the that I loaned out from February to go towards my tax sinking fund and I was able to put some money towards my tax sinking fund and we have discussed that. This is the weekly check-in. I've already closed that out as well and I've already verified and make sure these totals equals the totals that's in the spending record as well as in the accounts themselves. As you can see, week one and week three is always money going in. Week two and week four, that's where the money goes out. So we definitely need to look into that. This is the spending tracker for the unbudgeted. This is where we started with the $226.99 after everything was paid from income breakdown number one. This is also where I have um, received money owed, anything that I didn't fall underneath the category of something I planned. And so that's where this is coming from. Additionally, um, I did add $313.11 from the stimulus because I did receive that to this 
category because I wanted to go into April with a $500 buffer because I knew that um, there is an item that's waiting to, I guess, clear my account. Um, and so I knew this would bring this balance down and I just didn't want it to be nothing there. So I did put some money there. Even though I didn't share everything I'm doing with it, that was one thing I did with it. This was the emergency fund progress, and this is something we already discussed with the monthly debt update. We talked about the side income, so we're good to go. So let's go ahead, and we're going to go back here, but we're going to move here, because this is the monthly review. And let me take back out my marker, and we're going to put March. And there we go. Let's slide that out. So the first thing first, we're going to talk about the income that came in. So income source number one is my paychecks and the stipend. So the total was $3,438.43. And that total comes from the two income breakdown and the stipend amount. So that's where that total came from. So I did bring in a little bit more than I estimated. For income source number two, that is usually rollover, savings, and sinking funds. So that was a total of $634.10. And that was me pulling in the rollover from, from February was $301.54. I did pull $262.43 from my credit card um, savings slash checking account, whatever you want to call it. And then for sinking funds, I only pulled $70.13. Now for the bonus income, it was $563.69. And that included money from Papa, money owed, money from side income, money from the stimulus, um, money that was left over from my income breakdown, number one and two. So let's go ahead and add that all together to see what we actually have to work with, okay? Okay, so $4,636.22. If there's no changes to the fixed expenses, I simply just do that instead of write it all out. There was a change to the internet with his funky self as well. And um, that was because this is the rate they wanted me to pay. I did cancel the service, but I still had to pay that month full of service. And so $74.99. So they got something um, from me. <laughs> uh, streaming was the same. Life insurance was the same. So what I usually do is I take the total to $13.52.04. And I just minus the item that actually um, was changed or was different than what was budgeted, shall I say. So that was the internet. And then I add the actual, which was $74.99. And so we have $1,362.04. The next area is variable expenses. Um, there was no changes to the variable expenses bill-wise. Now for unbudgeted, I only spent $183.68. And then for dental, I didn't spend any money out of my income or my savings to dental. Instead, I put this charge on my credit card because I have a flexible spending account. And by the time everything's processed, the $36.10 will be reimbursed to me. And I can add that to my credit card checking account so when I pay the bill that would be in, that amount would be included as well. So the same thing I do is I take the 1356.97 I minus the items that's changed and then I add back the actual which is the 183.68 and that is not right. So let's do that again. 1356.97 <laughs> that's minus 268.14 and 3610 okay now let's add back the 18368 and there we go so one thousand two hundred thirty six dollars and forty one cents let's move to our envelope system and we're going to put that what was actually spent and for money fifty dollars gas was actually 195.09 
Yes, it was more than budget, but it's not making me over budget because there was more sent to gas than I actually budget because I pulled money from the side income and the unbudgeted category. So this is not a true over budget category. What is, is these groceries, which was $379.53. I'm going to put an asterisk there because it was over budget. I had to actually pull from the miscellaneous to cover week two. Um, so yeah, we had a problem and I did discuss when I was doing my meal plan and grocery haul that this was going to be a month of new, um, planning for me. And so I already knew that it may be some issues when shopping, but I didn't know it was going to be where I didn't have enough to cover week two. So that's, that's where we're standing for household. It was actually $43 and 60 cent. Again, not a true over. Um, category that's over budget because I sent more to the household category than I budgeted. Personal was one twenty seven forty. Another category that falls underneath the same thing. It's not over budget. And lastly, was restaurants was fifty seven dollars and thirty four cent. So again, not a true over budget. Add that all together. Okay, so we have eight fifty two ninety six. The last section is our savings and sinking funds. Basically, I always write when I'm saving, and in the categories, I write, uh, I put a check or a X if I spent out of that. Because again, this is another way that I do my checking balances to make sure that I have verified that the that this amount or the amount saved is went to the account and if I spent anything out of the account that I verified with my weekly check-in sheet and my spending records that that amount is actually in that account. So for car maintenance, it was 200. I did spend out of that account. Gifts was 25. Okay, so I've done that thus far. So now let's talk about savings. So the savings came from Zero Out Challenge. I was able to send $30.51, $26.62, and I went ahead and sent $2.68. And the reason why I did that was because when I calculated what I've saved from the beginning of the year into the point of doing my emergency fund update, um, it was $2.68 off from making the number even, which will make it easier for me to track. So that's where that two sixty eight dollars came from. Of course, I have not spent anything out of my savings. Now for check and buffer, as stated and shown, $500 was left out of there. So let's go ahead and add this all together. Okay, so it's $1,184.81. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to put what the total income of $4,636.22. Let's go ahead and add each category. All right, every dollar is accounted for and we love that so let's go ahead and we're going to go the back. monthly budget master plan this is a item i picked up from tasha with mind your money here on youtube as well as tasha loves life.com definitely check out her channel and check out her website she has very helpful financial um material that help you get your life together y'all and mind really mind your money Okay, <laughs> so go ahead and we're going to put March here and we're going to put 2021. And I am going to give myself a B. How did I do this month? So I didn't have as many unexpected 
expenses that could not be covered from my, either my buffer or my sinking back to my financial goals was I was able to pay off my 401k loan. If you've seen my debt update, you would have seen I was able to send a large chunk and um, as well as the remaining amounts have been cleared my payroll. So we're good to go with that. So going into April, we will not have SBL 3. I was able to build on my tax sinking fund. We're still working on it, even though the tax deadline has been extended. I still want to have everything by April 15th. So I'm hoping that the last little bit, which is from one individual, is received to me within the next few days where I do not have no problems. And I don't want to have to go and ask the person because you already know. Like when you already know, just don't don't have nobody asking for their money. Okay. So um, that's another reason why I'm still at a B. And lastly was the groceries, the over budget of the groceries. And that leads into what I could have done better. What I could have done better is stick to the plan. I found that when I do my prepan and I do my envelope system in um, savings and sinking funds, categories i often budget low okay and then when i do my income breakdown i actually send more to what i actually pre-plan and i find that that's where a lot of my confusion is going and i need to stick to what i said if i said i'm only going to send an amount to that category that's what i send and anything extra needs to be allocated somewhere else because someone else does need it and I find that because I'm using my check and buffer because some other area needed it because I under budget somewhere. Lastly is money affirmations. And based on what's been going on in the end of March, I think this affirmation fits well. I am capable of overcoming any money obstacles that stand in my way and that is true that is true and money solves money problems and when you have your finances in check and you have plans Though they may not go as you want them to, you still have a way to, you have a roadmap. And that's why I love doing in the beginning of the month, I love doing my pre-plan so I'm able to know, it's a guide. And the income breakdowns are pit stops. I said this before. So now I have received some income. Let me now determine where we need to go from there, where we need to adjust. But are we adjusting for the benefit of ourselves or are we adjusting because we're not planning properly? So that's where we're at with that. So again, this is my monthly budget closeout. This is usually what I do in order to start off my next month. Okay. So if you're new to my channel, I would love for you to be part of my village. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. To all my returning subscribers, I thank you. And please share this with your family, your friends, and your co-workers. Peace out. Oh, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up. <laughs>